let's look at how some Americans responded to European immigrants coming in the late 1800s and early 1900s. First is that some immigrants received assistance. Some immigrants were helped by Americans. You have to remember, at this time in the late 1800s, there's no unemployment payments. There's no support for people that are out of work provided by the government. Federal government isn't giving people money if they lose their job. State and local governments aren't providing much for people if they lose their job. That's especially hard on immigrants. Immigrants when they arrive and don't have a job and immigrants possibly if they lose their job. So immigrants relied on their relatives and their friends to support them in their times of need. Eventually, uh, this became more organized and communities started supporting each other and we get what are called immigrant aid societies. These would be like neighborhood social groups that would also take up collections uh, to benefit people struggling and eventually these neighborhood organizations are going to grow into national organizations. Immigrants also received assistance from settlement houses like Hull House in Chicago. Think of these like community centers, similar to the YMCA in some cities today. And they offered all kinds of services like classes and um, they served as sometimes a food pantry or soup kitchen. Uh, they were a place to sleep for people that were homeless and they provided uh, child care even for women that might have been working. Immigrants also received assistance, and I might use air quotes around that, from what we call political bosses. These are leaders of political parties in cities that are often able to provide jobs or services in exchange for votes. So if you vote for the Democratic Party, then the political boss of the Democratic Party might be able to find you a job. If you vote for the Republican Party, then the Republican Party political boss might be able to make sure garbage on your street always gets collected and you have uh, fire protection in case a fire breaks out. Let's next talk about assimilation or how immigrants became part of American culture. And there's a big difference in this when we look at older immigrants and younger immigrants. Older immigrants were more likely to hold on to their old culture and maintain their old ways. Food, dress, uh, celebrations. Younger immigrants are easier, uh, have an easier time assimilating to American culture. They're the ones who really join the American culture. They're the ones who experienced what we might call Americanization. And this is really made easier through the fact that they are receiving an American education. When they go to school, they are learning about U.S. history. They are learning about civics and government from an American perspective. And they're learning how to speak English. So it's much easier for younger immigrants to assimilate into American culture. Let's move on to how some Americans rejected immigrants there is a strong dislike towards immigrants. There's a fear that immigrants are taking jobs. There's a fear that immigrants are lowering wages by accepting work for lower pay than American-born workers. And there's concern over immigrants being used as scabs. Those would be replacement workers for striking workers. So one union goes on strike. The owner might bring in a bunch of immigrants to work temporarily. Those are called scabs. There's also a fear and a perception that immigrants are the cause of violent strikes in the nation. And there's real concern over whether or not these immigrants might have radical ideas. Are some of them socialists who want to change the economy and want to limit economic freedom? Are some of them anarchists who want to get rid of our government altogether, perhaps through violent means? These types of things don't fit with American ideals. And compared to immigrants from earlier in U.S. history, with the immigrants in the late 1800s, many of whom were Catholic or Jewish or Greek Orthodox, there's real concern over whether or not these immigrants, other, other than unlike immigrants before them, there's real concern over whether these immigrants could actually be assimilated into American culture. Could they ever fully become Americans? 
This negative response to immigration is called nativism, and that's literally favoring the interests of native-born Americans over those of immigrants. It has nothing to do with Native Americans. It's discrimination against immigrants. And it's not new. Ba way back in the 1850s, there was a group known as the Know Nothings who strongly opposed immigration of Irish Catholics and German immigrants. In the late 1800s, we have nativist organizations as well. In 1894, a new group, the Immigration Restriction League, went to Congress and requested uh, that Congress limit immigration by requiring a literacy test. In other words, requiring immigrants to read and write English. Congress passed that law. President Grover Cleveland vetoed it. However, it passes again in 1917, in the middle of World War I, when people are maybe even more afraid of immigrants. And in the 1920s, our nation will begin using what's called a quota system, where there is a limit on how many people from each country are allowed to enter the United States. But we'll talk more about that quota system and immigration in the 1920s later in the year.